Good morning. It is. I, I really want to acknowledge you for being in my life. I first started listening to your tapes about a year ago, and <clears throat> right now I'm in an inquiry around fine-tuning the law of deliberate creation along with allowing. And I'm working on daily workshops, as you talk about in the beginner tapes. And so every day I'm creating three things for myself. And yet, in one of your later programs, you're talking about how sometimes when you think about something too much, focus on it too much, you actually allow in some resistance towards it. It's exactly what we're talking about here, isn't it? Yeah. That when you pick up a subject, if it's a subject that you've already been practicing, however you've practiced, it's going to be dominant. Yeah, that's right. And so sometimes it's easier to choose another subject that is already vibrating in a place that you prefer, get that vibration going first, and then when you pick up that stick, maybe if you've practiced the other vibration long enough, a different part of that subject will be activated within you. Mm -hmm. For example, let's say that the subject that you're working on is dollars. And you have dollars, you just don't have as many dollars as you want. And you have a new relationship with someone who has activated your desire for more, more abundance, more things, more freedom. And as you feel this activated, you're feeling some shortage and you don't quite know where to go. So you say, well, I'm going to do a workshop or a visualization, a virtual reality on having more money. But when you think about it, you can feel the discord or the discomfort within you. So then you say, well, I think I won't think about money as such. Now, let us show you an exercise that will guide you in a short period of time into a much better feeling vibration. You pick the subject. If you want it to be about money, that's fine. You pick the subject, and we're just going to offer a sequence of questions to you. And as you feel the answer born within you as a result of the question, you'll feel your vibration shifting. You'll all see what we mean as we move along. Great. So yeah. pick a subject that you would like to deactivate one aspect of it and activate another aspect of it. Any subject. Dollars is a good one. All right. So does the knee-jerk response you have when you hear the word dollars or when you focus upon that subject, does it feel like freedom and adventure or does it feel like uncertainty and maybe a little more hard work than I'm wanting? That's One a good question. Don't spend too long on the answer okay. because it's, we it's, know. It's uncertainty and it's exciting. Which is more dominant, freedom or uncertainty? We know you know which one you want it to be. We're asking you where it is right now. Do dollars feel like free and adventure and fun and no question right. or does it feel like tentative, a little guarded, a little worried, a little vulnerable? The latter, a little, a little guarded, a little worried. All right, so now, that's the subject of dollars. Now, when you think about your life, do you feel successful or unsuccessful? Hmm, unsuccessful. When you think about your potential, do you feel optimistic or pessimistic? My potential optimistic, yeah. extremely optimistic. Yes, yeah. you do, don't you? Yeah. And so now, as you approach this subject of dollars, having activated that very real feeling of optimism that's within you, mm -hmm. does your financial future feel fun or worrisome? Very fun. It does, doesn't yeah. it? So already, just by posing questions from your place where you could feel your dominant place being one of well-being, mm -hmm. as you discovered that, now when you revisit what feels almost like the same question, you answer truthfully in a very different way, don't you? In other words, just by asking yourself some questions that activated you a little differently. So now, when you think about the subject of travel, does it feel like something that is possible or impossible? completely possible. When you think about the subject of financial freedom, does it feel like something that is plausible or implausible? 
plausible. When you think about finding some way of bringing dollars into your experience, does it feel like something that you're looking forward to or something that you're worried about? Looking forward to it. When you think about money, does money feel to you like something that is life-giving or life-draining? Life-giving. It is. Yeah. What you are speaking and what you are feeling absolutely is accurate. In other words, just in that little short period of time, by making a decision, now we helped out because we asked questions we knew the answers to the questions before we asked them, but so do you. In other words, you know when you think of this friend that it's going to make your heart sing, and when you think of this friend it's going to evoke worry. You know that when you're going to think of this piece of clothing, you're going to feel this way, and when you think of this piece of clothing, you're going to feel this way. You know how you feel about all things, and so what we're suggesting here is that because you know, you start definitively choosing things that you know will make you feel good when you choose them. That You start treating yourself like we do. You ask questions that you know the answer will feel good when it comes. Bring us back round to where we are. Okay. Before I do that, I wanted to mention something earlier. That um, I, I don't have much experience with seeing people's auras, but you have an intense aura. <laughs> do you get that? I mean, I was looking at you. And it's bright yellow. Yes. And then I looked at Jerry, and it's the same thing. It's like glowing from you. It's really wild. <laughs> right? And at first, I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me, and I'm banging my head and rubbing my eyes. And then at break, I was talking to two friends that came with me, and they said the same thing. It's like, it's, it's, it's not me, it's, it's you. <laughs> Where does that come from? Well, it is energy leakage. Energy leakage. All of you have that. And to the degree of your focus, in other words, we talked earlier about the momentum. So when you see aura, it is usually because there is focus that is happening, energy is flowing, and no resistance. Mm -hmm. That is usually what it means. Do different colors mean different things? The color variation is best explained by being in the eye of the beholder because you are translating the vibration into what you are seeing and so at some level of your being that translation process is taking place mm -hmm. in the same way that Esther is interpreting the vibration into the words you are interpreting the vibration into what you're seeing and so your impressions even what your vibration is can influence the colors that you see. Yes. So you may want to say in, you know, on your website or something, bring sunglasses next time. <laughs> Depends upon where you are. Everyone does not see it. Okay. And that does not mean that they are broken. Right. Uh, yes. So thank you for that. Yes. So what we were talking about before, the way I, I interpreted it, was um, to ask myself powerful questions around dollars and what it means for me. Well, what we are talking about is you do not necessarily want to go to the subject of your greatest concern and begin asking yourself questions, mm -hmm. because that may very well just activate the vibration that is already not serving you. Mm -hmm. But if you find yourself on a topic that is, as our friend said earlier, sort of in your face so much that you can't get off of it, then one of the easiest ways to bridge your vibration into something that feels better, one of the easiest ways we know of, is to ask more general questions around that topic mm -hmm. and ask the questions of yourself to which you know the answers are favorable. Okay. Um, within that, <clears throat> so you're saying basically if I'm doing my workshops, as long as I'm feeling good about it, creating it daily or whatever is okay. But yes, if I'm and, bringing and up negative thoughts to let it go and, and... And there's something else that we're saying to you. We want you to go to your creative workshop to work on your creation, not because that is the means to the end that you want, but because this is an end that is pleasing too. In other words, we want you to mold your mind in your workshop yeah. because that feels really good. It's a wonderful use of time. Yeah. Yeah. We watch all of you. You want to get finished with your work so that you can go play. Yeah. 
And what you really are saying is, I want to stop doing this thing I don't want to do so that I can start doing something that I do want to do. And we want you to make every moment a moment where you're doing something that you do want to do. No matter what, if you're at work, then you're looking for positive aspects there. If you are visiting with a friend, you are looking for positive aspects there. In other words, you're not enduring this uncomfortable moment on your way to another that hopefully will be better. Mm -hmm. You are mining this moment for all that it could give you. And once you get in the spirit of that, oh, the yield from your moments is profound. Do you have a recommendation around whether... It's more powerful in creating in the workshop something that's very defined and specific. Like Here if is I have the rule of thumb. General, like be as specific as you can be and still feel good. It's like as we were encouraging people in their virtual realities, you can feel when you've gone too far. In other words, okay. you can feel when it's still open and feeling good, and you can feel when you add that one little element that mutes the joy a little. That's why by trial and error, you just keep raising your vibration into newer and clearer places. Okay. It's, the rule of thumb is be as specific as you can be and still feel good. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a whole world out there and a lot of things that you've tried to teach yourself that says something like, but I should face reality. I should tell it like it is. I should tell the truth. I should be honest. And what we are saying is sometimes that blatant honesty of telling it like it is just keeps a vibration alive that won't let what you want in and so we're suggesting less honesty we're not suggesting falsehood because you cannot falsely vibrate we are suggesting more focus upon the things that honestly please you and less focus upon the things that honestly displease you In other words, there are a lot of truths out there that are really in vibrational harmony with your well-being. Like the fact that well-being is dominant. And like the fact that there is much more wellness on your planet, even among humans, than there is sickness. And about the fact that there is abundance flowing rampantly. And that you have never lived in a time more potential to give you a glorious life experience. And on and on and on. In other words, if you want to be factual, just be selective in the facts that you truthfully focus upon. Yes. Great. When someone says, well, I got to be honest with you, what they always are saying is, I'm going to tell you some bad news and (laughs) and I'm going to cover it up under the guise of it being honest, so therefore it is something that we should all talk about. So when someone says, well, let me be honest with you, say, Can it be honest and good feeling at the same time? Mm. Or does honesty always have to be bad news? Yes. It also implies that all the other times are not being honest. That's what Jerry says. When someone says, I'm going to tell you the truth, then he's suspect. (laughs) Even of of this moment. Yes. So when I'm starting to see results or what I think are results, it's okay to question that. Like, oh my God, is, is it actually happening? Or is this my imagination, or is it not happening? Well, it's all right to question it, but in time, you won't want to question it anymore because you'll just know. In other words, we are so looking forward to you anticipating the unfolding of your life in the way that we are. Uh There's not any reason for doubt whatsoever. Good things are natural to you, and you have lined up so many through the power of your desire. And so we just want you to relax and expect that the universe is knocking itself out to accommodate you, for it is. And yet physical beings who have forgotten about this energy flow and are not really paying too much attention to the way they feel begin to notice that when they see that and they feel good, then they say, yes, more of that. But when they see that and they feel bad, they say, oh, let's have less of that. And then they begin wanting to do the impossible, which is to control the conditions so that all they're left are with conditions that feel good. Mm -hmm. And it gives them this distorted view that there's this bad stream out there that could assert itself in some way and that there might be a good stream out there that could assert itself, but who knows? which one it will be and dare I even trust that good would befall me when there is so many streams of bad and we say where do you guys get this stuff there is not a stream of bad there's just you not letting in the good that would be there if you weren't doing that thing in other words when you do that thing that doesn't let it in which is always accompanied by negative emotion then it can't come in but if you're not doing that thing it's coming in